I think in 2000s it was a peak of being not classy. It's so rude, too bright makeup and overdone makeup. Hello guys, so let's talk today about what classy really means. Some time ago I did the video what glamour really is. And this video is gonna be connected to that one a little bit in some sense, because I hear from time to time people say, oh, she looks so classy or he's so classy. When I look at what exactly they describe with this word, I sometimes get confused because there's so different things that some people consider classy. Probably they just don't know the word itself. I just decided to go deep into the subject and just find out a little bit more about the word itself. But of course I'm not gonna talk from a classy viewpoint because I don't consider myself necessarily classy, you know. I'm not opting always for elegance or sophistication. I'm kind of a little bit of everywhere probably. <laughs> so first let's find out what classy really means. So classy is a word used to describe people, places or things that have a lot of class. Not much information, right? What is class then? Class is a collection of things sharing a common attribute. And then if we be more specific about people, then class is people having the same social, economic or educational status. But there's another definition of class, which is even more specific than that. And it says class is elegance in appearance or behavior. So etymology, in 1600s, it meant group of students. French classe from Latin classes, a class division army. So that goes from calare to call and kele to shout. But when the word class actually started having that high quality meaning. So that happened in 1874. There was a division of society according to status, upper class, lower class, and so on. So that happened approximately in 1874. The word classic is similar. It belongs to the highest class approved as a model. From French classique, from Latin classes, relating to the highest classes of the Roman people, superior, richer, in the first class. So if you've seen my glam video, we talked about aristocracy a little bit, yeah? So many, 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 many centuries ago, a guy was strong enough and bold enough to go to a land of other people and just say, now, I'm the main guy here and I'm gonna rule this land. So in the history, there's a lot of examples. And then he lives there, he becomes the king, and then he has family, he has kids and generations that inherit money from him. So he was brave enough to do this, bold enough to do this, so that the strongest kind of survive better. E even genetically, why we survive, why we are here, why we do we have these bodies. We inherited the genetics of our bodies from the past generations. They appear to be the strongest, that's why we are here. And the weakest ones, they stopped existing at some point on the planet. So you know, strongest kind of survive and all these things. But there are some families who inherited a lot of money. So here we come to old money and new money. New money is called nouveau riche, just recently became rich. So an old money, this is inherited money families. Families who were born in wealth, so they see different picture. They are surrounded by different quality things around them. And nouveau riche are people who've seen it all, probably, who've seen the bottoms in the beginning of their lives, but somehow they got rich. So now they have access to all those things, but their eyes are not trained because they have seen it all. They don't quite know if they were not interested on in that before, on the way how rich people are dressed up, what they buy, where they eat, what they eat and all, what, all those things. If they didn't have the direct attention on that, they probably don't know about this. So it would be appropriate for their own status. So the easiest way you go to a shop, and buy expensive brands. That is the easiest. You kind of can't make a mistake if you have like a Gucci belt. This is why nouveau riche kind of very often go to a glam situation. Again, if you watch this video, how glam situation came up and how it is connected to nouveau riche to new money. So many nouveau riche, they're trying to learn from upper class now because now they have money where to spend because there's so much stuff around them that they can spend it on. They didn't observe it from the childhood. That's the problem. They didn't have this natural sense of it. Some do, but many don't. So this is why they sometimes can hire a stylist, but you can't put your stylist sleep in your walking closet and then wait till you wake up in the morning and dress you up. So you gotta kind of have a 
little bit knowledge yourself in order to know how to do this. Nowadays, just to go to the shop and buy the most expensive clothes, it's also not a good thing because it's a very tricky thing. You can buy something that actually is very cheap in production for a very big money just because it's prestigious or it's from somebody who made it famous. You know, the price and the value of a certain thing is... I can understand the difference in the price between $15 jeans and $200 jeans. For I can assume that $200 jeans probably has better fabric, better quality, better shape, better everything. But then if we talk about $500 jeans and $5,000 jeans, this is where it becomes tricky, like what exactly you're paying for, unless it has like crystals on it. Upper class people, on contrary, see, again, not all of them. Nowadays, many people live absolutely differently, but I'm just generalizing. So upper class people, they see vintage aristocratic things, timeless pieces, more classic pieces since childhood. Feel this, they shop in a certain shops because to make a well-sitting dress or blazer, it takes up so much more work and also depends on the fabric. And also upper class people, they normally treat it individually, certain tailored clothes piece. Imagine blazer that is done with very thin synthetic fabric that is slightly shiny, that has just one layer, no under layer, and that doesn't have any shape. So it's made very simple. It doesn't require much time to do, but it's not gonna sit properly. So that's gonna look kind of cheap. That's why very expensive blazers and trousers, they're gonna look very different. Like as an experiment, you can go to a very, very expensive shop, just check, especially blazers, dresses, maybe trousers, check how they are made inside of the lining, check the shoulder line, check here, touch the fabric, try to stretch the fabric and just see how it feels. Check how thick the fabric is or how transparent it is and also check how it's hanging on your hand normally they're gonna keep its shape pretty well so i think before the difference between upper class and lower class was bigger because no youtube i think when youtube started and people started sharing their knowledge and sometimes secret knowledge not a certain number of people have access to this knowledge but basically people who are opening the secrets. So we started knowing what is expensive, what is not expensive, why it is so expensive, why it looks so good, why this doesn't look so good, and so on. You know, now we have a chance to know this. Now, I decided to go to Pinterest and search for classy there. And this is what I've seen. Colors are mostly white, black, beige, sky blue, navy blue, brown, maybe dark green or emerald green, gray, something like this. And a bit less of the pastel -y colors and more complicated colors or more bright colors. And also complicated colors, meaning colors that with added gray to it, muted, more dull colors. Now, if you look at the shape, shape is very certain. It's close to the body, but it's still not overly sleek. So it's not very oversized and it's not overly sleek. So there is always a centimeter or two between the skin and the garment itself but it's still pretty close to the body because it keeps its shape. Nothing is too unshapely done because it's harder to do. It's harder to make with hands, something shapely. The silhouette is pretty narrow. It's very well tailored. It's very complicatedly tailored going along with the body, not just one square piece. Yeah, it has some other different stitches. It has some different pleats and stuff. It's very sculpted. The shape is very complementing the body. Fabric is thick well ironed, not see-through. In majority cases, it depends on what outfit she has and mostly matte, unless it's atlas or silk. But it's rarely slightly shiny. It's because slightly shiny fabrics is normally synthetic fabrics. So atlas and silk, they can be very shiny. And other fabrics are very often matte. So expensive, pretty classic jewelry they have and their makeup is simple, classic, no bright colors, nothing too intense, too extravagant or too artistic. It's something timeless, held back a little bit, vintage, more or less natural. Hair and brows are very well groomed. Hair normally is very tidy and not tousled. Now sneakers became very expensive. Only upper class sometimes can afford some kind of sneakers, which is funny. But mostly it's pretty old fashioned shoes, heels, high heels, pointed shoes, beige or black. Uh, it can also be loafers and suede shoes. Of course, designer bags, classic clean shapes, 
and also very little embellishment or different kinds of elements. Very little different kinds of patterns or prints or some additions like stones or things like this. So I decided to Google what is actually opposite to classy. Dowdy, graceless, inelegant, stylistless. So dowdy means old-fashioned, tasteless and kind of shabby. Here's how shabby looks. I just googled the word shabby in terms of clothes and we can see it's not bad and it's not cheap. It's just different. It's like an opposed to this, yeah? Natural fabric, which is unprocessed, no special dyes or anything like this, just as it is. Normally it's cotton or linen, unfinished hems, soft fabric, not ironed. The fabric is not keeping its shape. It's made very straight. It doesn't have anything like figure clothes and it's pretty free. It's pretty easy. So if it's done like this, so many, many people can actually fit this. Undone edges. It even looks a little bit like peasant's clothes, right? So that is kind of like an opposite thing. Nowadays, it's also can be pretty expensive clothes like this, you know, because it's all like an idea back to the nature. Also disagreement with upper class and all the things, emotional things, and sometimes even that kind of things nowadays is harder to produce because the production of the clothes also changed throughout the years, yeah? Something that was very hard to do many years ago, now it's easy to produce. So more people can have access to it. And upper class still is trying to get something exclusive, something that not everybody can get. This is how they, they feel better. They're ready to pay more money for this. So what would be not classy then? if we talk about modern fashion. You know, some time ago I made a video how to look classy, but the original name of it was different. How not to look like a star. But YouTube doesn't let me monetize this video. It's a little bit kind of like on the border. So if you don't want, don't watch. I was looking at that classiness from one certain viewpoint, making it opposite to that porn chic kind of a style, exaggerated over the top, but now I just want to see what would be the opposite to that classiness that we just seen on Pinterest, that generalized classiness. And what I can see is, first of all, bright colors would be probably not part of the classy thing that we just observed. Two bright colors and two simple colors, like simple red, simple green, simple blue, like kids' paints. So the colors for classiness would be a bit more complicated. That would be with the pastels, those colors with added white, or these colors with different amount of gray in them, different types of muted and dull shades, which look more complicated, more shady, and more kind of expensive, if I can say so. Also much embellishment and addition, different kinds of prints, flowers, stones, all those things, something very, very noisy. Also synthetic fabric or something undone, unprocessed. And the garment that is whether too oversized or too sleek also would be opposite to elegancy and classiness. Something that would be pretty squarish in shape, wide in shape, not very well done seams. Bulky shoes, platforms probably don't go to that category. Something childish, childish outfits, childish and aesthetics probably. Of course, I mean childish for older people. It's not opposite to classy, I would say, but it just goes to a different category. This is probably something that you would not call classy. Chunky jewelry, probably made with cheap material, maybe not stones, but maybe something big, wooden, or mostly, I would say, maybe plastic. I don't invalidate that also. So I'm just trying to see the opposite because I don't consider myself like as a part of this classy world. I love being classy, but I love being not classy too. And another thing, shaggy, undone, untidy hair, ungroomed, probably go to that category or too modernized or futuristic unbalanced and very interesting haircuts and colors and too bright makeup and overdone makeup. I also think that this whole thing comes from Europe because this is historically when we remember, you know, that aristocracy and lower class and higher class, and how they were all dressed and what was happening. And uh, also when my mom was in Italy, she sent me pictures of the buildings, churches and cathedrals in Italy. Inside it was done with stones, with marble. The marble, different kinds of marbles and stones, they have their own color and the color normally is complicated color. It's not bright red, bright yellow, bright pink. And just in general, those bright, bright, bright colors, this is synthetic colors that has been developed actually pretty recently because several centuries ago they used natural colors, colors from plants, from flowers, 
And in Europe, when they were building a house or a cathedral, they were using materials that were right there in this land. In different places, they used different materials. And on some materials, you would paint them. But some materials, like a stone, like a marble, who would paint a marble? So marble is, is itself had a certain color. And normally marble's colors are pretty dull and muted. So there are many complicated colors, for example, in, in Italy, inside of the buildings. Look at that, how beautiful it is. And uh, for example, in Morocco, in Arabia, they knew how to get the actual dyes, like the actual paint from the flowers. So their paints, they were much more bright. And they also were doing sometimes their houses and their buildings with uh, different materials materials because it's sandy there, it's drier there. And this is why in Morocco, in Arabia, we have so many bright colors, intense colors, but still those colors were natural at that time. And natural colors were still not synthetic looking. Those are absolutely unique, intense, bright colors, but they are very expensive looking. You just gotta go there and just see it with your own eyes. I've been in Saudi Arabia and I can say that colorfulness looks even classier this is my Saudi Arabian mirror and I'm not saying that it has been done not with synthetic colors of course it's like it's a handmade mirror the way how they manipulate those rich colors I think it's classy by itself some women they do look classy with intense colors and some women no they just don't look classy they look cheap this is when we talk about body types and colorations. In Hollywood, probably not everybody knows, but there were like so many different people from the world who made this film industry. There were Chinese people, Russian people, loads of people from Europe. There were Japanese people, Brazilian, who actually created that Hollywood. And this is why I think that became very famous, because it included everything, because it was created by people from all over the world. We don't always know them, because there was their actress and actresses and there are some people behind it that are working on the screen but everybody brought its culture to that and even now america is like multicultural country where everybody's bringing it their own and each one of them has their own classiness i would say i think also in sports clothes it's not classy it's considered not classy because this is not the clothes that you're wearing for some kind of an official events it's very private thing yeah you're just sweating and you're just going to the gym or you're just working out i think in 2000s it was a peak of being not classy and i think after that it kind of calmed down now i think it's a mixture of unclassy and classy many young people started becoming rich because of the internet because of the social media i think that changed a little bit so much more people nowadays can become rich they can become suddenly rich now it's a mix unclassy and classy i can see upper class and very rich people are wearing ripped jeans well and before it was it's a punk culture of the 60s it's so rude also huge sneakers huge blazers huge everything that is another thing nowadays that is even can get the label classy i think maybe the real romanticization of lower class became in the 60s with mods and rockers when they actually exaggerated that absolute opposite way of dressing just showing that we're not you we don't have all this money and we don't have all this glam and we don't need it we don't want it we're against it we feel happy and we don't want to be like you then 70s hippie denial of lux luxury also happened 90s grunge with Kurt Cobain again we don't need all your glam, we don't need all that luxury. That was kind of against luxury. So even luxurious brands, they tried to look slightly trashy, just kind of like to be on trend. So they were kind of celebrating that untidy, undone looks. And I think it all was happening until it reached its biggest point in 2000s. People were just celebrating that anti-classy look. And that classy looks that we just observed, it could actually be pretty old-fashioned looking, especially with high-waisted pants. Too much like rich parents. It was very boring and very untrendy. And then everyone calmed down a little bit in 2010s, and now we have a mixture of everything, but we're still gonna see where it's gonna go. I recommend you to watch this video where you're gonna find out a lot about the glamorous parts of these things. Subscribe on my Patreon or click the join button here. Thanks so much to everyone who subscribed. You support me so, so much. And also subscribe on this channel and click the bell button so not to miss the new videos. Thank you. Bye.